Councilor Berry. Here. Councilor Fritz. Here. Councilor McGinty. Here. Councilor Roberts. Here. Councilor Sukayata. Here. Councilor Watson. Here. Student Representative Pucci. Here. Student Representative Elia. Here. And Manager McGovern. Here. And the town clerk. President. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. May I have Brendan James Sweeney, please? Come to the podium. <laughs> We're going to turn this way so that the camera and all of the town gets to see you. <laughs> Whereas Brendan James Sweeney, a member of Boy Scout Troop 30, recently earned scouting's highest honor, the Eagle Scout Award. And whereas during his time in the Boy Scouts, he earned 28 merit badges, much above the number that is required. And through earning these badges, Brendan displayed responsibility in citizenship, camping, and outdoor survival skills, and attained significant levels of personal fitness. And whereas as a scout, he has been elected and named to a number of leadership positions, and he volunteered over 700 hours in service to the community. And whereas his final community service project was the rehabilitation of a disabled senior citizen's home, a project he organized bringing together five other students, demonstrating his leadership skills and his care for others in the community. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council that we hereby congratulate Brendan James Sweeney on having attained the Eagle Scout rank and thank him for his service to the community of Cape Elizabeth, dated this 11th day of September 2000 at Cape Elizabeth, Maine. championship and whereas winning the final game was the culmination of another successful season with a championship in every year in the 1990s and now in the year 2000 lacrosse has begun a new decade with another championship and whereas boys lacrosse in cape elizabeth has maintained a record of excellence that is unsurpassed in this sport in maine and perhaps in the entire nation and whereas the entire Cape Elizabeth community is proud of the accomplishments of the members of this team, now therefore be it resolved by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council that we hereby congratulate the Cape Elizabeth Boys Lacrosse State Champions and we praise them for the honor that they have earned for themselves, for their families, for their school, and for their community. Dated this 12th day of June in the year 2000 at Cape Elizabeth, Maine. Congratulations. <laughs> Great way to start the evening with five teenagers that have made such great accomplishments here. Um, reports and correspondence, please. Councillor Roberts. Madam Chairwoman, the Appointments Committee is still looking for uh, someone to serve on the Conservation Commission. 
This is a group that has a lot to do with how different developments are put into Cape Elizabeth. And if somebody feels that they would be interested in helping us out on that and serving the community at the same time, please get in touch with the town manager, or you can put an application in directly through the town's website at www.capeelizabeth.com. Thank you. Councillor Barry. Uh, thank you. Madam Chairman, uh, I was pleased to learn that uh, three members of our varsity uh, field hockey team uh, have been selected to go with the team called the Down Easters to a uh, field hockey national meeting down in Florida in November at the uh, participate in the year 2000 National Field Hockey Festival. And uh, the uh, three outstanding students of our uh, town of Cape Elizabeth varsity hockey team, field hockey team, are Megan Entwistle and Heidi Hanna and uh, Lacey Rintel, who is one of the captains of the team. Uh, they have all, I believe, been on the honor roll and uh, in, in the Cape school system and are outstanding in the soccer uh, field. They have uh, selected two teams from all over the state of Maine to go down to Florida. And uh, we're very pleased that we have three local young ladies. Uh, there is an expense involved. It costs uh, approximately $1,500 for each, which would involve $4,500. And if anybody is interested in uh, uh, being a sort of booster for uh, any of these three young ladies on our field hockey team who have been uh, outstanding not only scholastically but in athletics, uh, and would like to uh, assist them in uh, the finance area, and you could contact either uh, town manager Michael McGovern or me, Henry Berry, and I'll be happy to uh, pass along any uh, uh, financial assistance to these young ladies to send them down to Florida to represent the state of Maine and Cape Elizabeth. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Councillor Watson. Madam Chair, I'd just like to um, recognize our two student reps. Oh, I was getting to that. Okay, We're, go ahead. I don't want to steal your thunder, but you know, it's, uh, I will defer to you, but it is the start of our third year. Yep. No, uh, go right ahead. Of having uh, student representatives uh, on the council. And every year we are very blessed um, to have great representation. Their peers work hard at designating uh, individuals with talent and interest in uh, public service. And uh, we're, I think it's wonderful that you're here. And I know Penny has many more words, so I don't want to steal her thunder. Oh. But it, it's great, great to have you. And uh, you always bring some uh, very good perspective, very nice perspective from the student side. So glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you. And she is speaking for the whole council. And I'll just move on to the next item. Then. Um, town manager, are there any more reports and correspondence? Uh, town manager's report, please. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, three or f actually five items. I uh, just wanted to remind everyone that we have an employee recognition luncheon and festivities this Thursday at 12 noon. Uh, the town offices, the library, the public works department, including the transfer station, will be closing at 12 noon on Thursday. So plan accordingly. It will be open Wednesday night until uh, the usual 7 p.m., and it will be open at usual hours uh, on Friday. I mean, the transfer station town office won't be open until 7 on Wednesday night. Uh, the facilities committee is going to be meeting tomorrow at 6.30. This is for the, they'll be over at the new public works crowd looking at that facility which is due to be completed uh, probably in about six weeks. Uh, the council is having a workshop on September 26th, that's a Tuesday evening at 7.30 uh, to look at the report of the historic preservation study committee that uh, Councillor Berry chaired. Uh, it submitted its report probably about six months ago now. It uh, seems like quite a long time ago. And the Conservation Commission will be there as well to discuss open space and, and trail plans. I did want to thank as well all of the citizens for their cooperation with the new addresses. I noted in driving around town this weekend, I think I saw three or four folks putting out their new numbers on their mailboxes <laughs> I was driving by. This has been a, a major effort in cooperation. Uh, with the United States Postal Service, as well as uh, with all our different departments. And I, I want to thank the departments for their work implementing it, the, the Postal Service, and particularly uh, the citizens for uh, getting started to get used to the new street numbers, as well as the, the new street names. 
And the, finally, I did want to mention the swimming pool. Some of you may be wondering what's going on with the swimming pool and the fitness center. The fitness center reopened today. It was planned that we have a two-week uh, shutdown every year. Uh, however, the two-week shutdown has run into three or four weeks uh, rather than the, the original amount that was planned. Uh, that was primarily as a result of warranty work that was being done on the pool and in particularly the grouting of the pool. It ended up we totally re-grouted the entire pool. Uh, many have asked, well, how, does, how does this affect my membership? And uh, we've had a meeting on that uh, at the staff level, and we will be extending all of the annual memberships for one full month, so no one will be losing out on any of the benefit of their annual membership, and we'll be extending the, the monthly memberships by the amount of time that was lost, so no one will lose out uh, as a result of, of the shutdown, other than uh, town revenues, which are not half as important. Uh, as everything else. So really pleased that the pool, I think when everyone goes back and sees it, they'll see it's in the best shape since the day it opened. And, uh, it is part of a routine shutdown we'll have every year, but this one was a little bit longer than we may have anticipated. So it will be reopening uh, actually for some private pool parties uh, on the 16th, <coughs> excuse me, this coming Saturday the 16th, I think, and then to, uh, later uh, for the full public. So thank you, Madam Chair. I'm, I'm, I'm distracted by this high-tech council we have over here, <laughs> taking minutes as we speak on the computer. We'll get our, we'll get our report probably as we leave. Uh, <laughs> All right. Way to put the heat on. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, the minutes of the August 14th meeting, which are in your packet, please. Let's not get these. Any errors or omissions? Need a motion? I'll make a motion, Madam Chairman, that the uh, minutes of the August 14th uh, meeting be approved and read. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, none. Motion carries. Uh, item number, hmm, what are these numbers? Citizens' discussion. Cit oh, citizens' discussions of items. Are there any citizens that have items that they would like to bring up that are not on the agenda at this time? Hearing none. We'll move on, please. Uh, is the, item number 33, action to change the date of the regular October Town Council meeting to October 2nd, 2000. This is due to the uh, Columbus Day holiday weekend. So we need a motion to do that? So moved. Second. We moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, none. Thank you very much. Item number 34, Action to set a public hearing on a citizen position to open up Jordan Farm Road for full paid, paved access to Broad Cove. The council has received um, over the last few weeks several uh, letters, phone calls, uh, emails, and messages from a variety of, of neighbors from a variety of streets. Um, historically, items like this are extraordinarily difficult for people that live in any one of the neighborhoods affected by these sorts of things. Certainly the council in its policy making capacity, which is what we do is set policy, and policy in public capacity such as this is the will of the people. So it's our job to listen to all the people and to respect all sides of each issue. Everybody has an opinion. Um, Everybody wants the, the exact same fairness that their opinion should be heard equally by people in the audience, by people on the council, or anybody that's affected. So that being the case, um, <clears throat> tonight I've asked uh, Mr. Kramer, who brought the original petition forward, to speak five minutes. O only this is not a debate. This is only an opportunity to present the fact that he's presenting this petition, which he set around. Also, Mrs. Wasserman, who speaks from the other point of view, has five minutes to speak on behalf. It's not very long. This is not a public hearing. This is just an opportunity for them to introduce the point of view and the fact that there are two more than one point of view. We only have one point of view, which is in this petition, but we know that there is uh, a full other side that is not yet just pre presented material. So they should have an opportunity to present their side. That is all we're going to do tonight on that issue in terms of public comment. The council then, under ordinary circumstances in a situation like this, would automatically set this type of issue to public hearing. It gives us an opportunity to listen to anybody 
who wishes to speak on it, and anybody who wishes to give their point of view. Um, that's how we hear. That's the only way the council can hear more than one point of view. We have one point of view in this petition, but it is only one. So public hearing is the, is the way we do it in this town and many towns is a way of hearing several points of view. Now in this particular incidence, there has um, been some communication with me and I think all of the councilors asking that there not be a public hearing that this is just a dead issue and that we shouldn't have a public hearing about it and that it would cause um, friction among neighborhoods and neighbors. I'm sure all of the members of this council, and I do not speak for them on this issue, uh, have their own interest on, on a public hearing. I personally have spent, will have spent 11 years setting public policy and I believe there should be a public hearing. Now this council has an opportunity, something that as an opportunity tonight to decide to maybe not set it for public hearing. It is simply a matter of votes. My opinion is just one. So I'm going to ask uh, tonight that um, Mr. Kramer step up and just present to us how this came about, how we happened to set it. You see, I, I, have turned, I have that microphone is still turned the wrong way. So for sure and straighten that out and, and bring it down, please. And um, just introduce yourself, where you live, your, your address. Uh, and you have five minutes. Thank you, Chairman Carson. My name is Asher Kramer. I live on Ledgewood Lane in the Broad Cove neighborhood. And I'd like to clarify that while I did uh, present the petition, I am not the sole sponsor of this, and I am simply part of a committee of concerned citizens that uh, put this material together and that uh, garnered the support of the neighbors uh, to uh, put the petition forward. Um, <clears throat> And I do appreciate the time uh, of the council. I realize that this is a issue with a long history and a great deal of complexity. And, uh, and I realize that all sides should be heard in this, uh, in this debate. Um, I'd like to, if I could, go over the major points that were outlined in our citizens petition and uh, reiterate that this was a process that was a number of the neighbors in Broad Cove from all over the neighborhood that started this. I was simply one of the um, participants and was selected by my colleagues and neighbors to, uh, to represent this. We began a petition drive of a signature campaign throughout the neighborhood in June. And uh, you have attached in the materials that are part of the public record 146 of our neighbors who have signed the petition requesting that a second and permanent access road be opened into Broad Cove. <clears throat> And I'd like to just reiterate the points that we make in the materials that we submitted. We believe that <clears throat> the current single access creates a safety issue regarding the volume and speed and concentration of traffic that is unacceptable to the majority of the neighbors who live along the roads, namely the lower part of Hunts Point, Salt Spray, and Broad Cove that are subjected to two to 3,000 cars a day. We believe that this volume and speed of traffic poses a safety hazard to the young children in the neighborhood. The second point that we made, and a lot of this was outlined by Mr. McGovern in his 1989 memo to the council requesting that a second road be opened, <coughs> regarding that uh, emergency only access roads do not offer the same type of egress into a neighborhood as a permanent and paved road did. And we have um, uh, anecdotes in the uh, materials that we submitted regarding the longer time it would take for safety vehicles to enter the back end of the neighborhood. This, as far as we perceive, is an issue that goes back many years, back into the 60s and 70s when the neighborhood was first developed, and never was the intent that there only be a single access into the neighborhood, yet the neighborhood became pro progressively developed and now it's a result of a, an almost two mile dead end road into the neighborhood. It was never intended. The original designs called for multiple entrances and our intent tonight is not to go over the history of why this happened, but simply to the, address the consequence, which is a current single access. <clears throat> Town subdivision regulations would imply the need for a second access road and um, we believe that the town council should 
recommend to the planning board that these regulations be put into place in the neighborhood. For the 84 homes that are directly impacted by this level of traffic, we believe that the quality of neighborhood life is degraded and that the majority of the neighbors in the Broad Cove neighborhood are negatively impacted by this. And we would ask from a public policy standpoint that the council consider changing the current zoning regulations for the majority benefit of the citizens who live in the neighborhood. We believe that the current situation is not fair to the majority and believe also that <clears throat> in Mr. McGovern's memo, very cogently pointed out that traffic studies indicated that traffic would decrease and smooth out throughout the neighborhood. In other neighborhoods, such as Shore Acres, there is a similar single egress into the neighborhood, yet there is a different way that the neighborhood was designed with multiple entrances in and out of any single street, and nowhere is there the same type of a, a situation where there's this concentration down such a long and extended uh, roadway. <clears throat> in terms of the history, um, the letter to Peter Kennedy in 1994 indicated Excuse that- me, you, you have one minute now. Um, thank you. That um, it would need to take a, uh, a, a petition such as this from the citizens to reopen this issue. We do not believe this is a dead issue. We believe that this is an issue that the neighborhood should not have been developed in this way, and that now is the chance for the council to reconsider the decisions that were made in the past. We also realize that ultimately it will be an issue of the planning board, as well as the Department of Environmental Protection that will have to um, consider this. Uh, we postulate that it's best left to those experts to determine the exact environmental impact, and, um, and and we'll defer to that. Right now, we would ask that the council reconsider this and to recommend to the planning board to further consider the environmental and zoning impacts. So once again, we thank you for your time and consideration. We uh, apologize for bringing such a thorny issue to you, but uh, believe that uh, this is what you're here for, to debate public policy. Thank That's you. true. Thank you. Mrs. Wasserman, thank you very much. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to be able to speak, so um, excuse me if I'm a little rough with here, but thank you for the opportunity. First of all, um, welcome to my neighbors, and thank you for, for letting us present a somewhat different point of view um, about living in Broad Cove. And first of all, we're very sympathetic. I am, and, and many of my neighbors, um, here with me from my part of this program to these issues of speed and traffic volume. Mrs. Wasserman, could you speak um, to us and the speaker? Sure. I hope they know what you're saying Sorry. so that the TV audience sure. uh, can hear, because I think there's a lot of watchers well, tonight. So absolutely, the safety of our neighborhood is important. But when addressing some of the specific issues that are being raised, I think we need to acknowledge that the issue of speed goes beyond roads. More roads will not necessarily decrease speed. I think we need, and within our neighborhood, to have a very aggressive, extensive, and extended speed campaign, drawing on all of our resources from at every point of view to address issues of speed in our neighborhood. Um, and I would love to help work with anybody on that. And, and with regard to the issue of volume, I think that there's been a shift in thinking and planning. When I've talked with some people from USM and others, in the last 10 years, the planning board, um, I have a, a found a report from the American Planning Association, which actually has shown that land uses change in response to accessibility. So the evidence nationwide is showing that when you increase capacity, traffic volume tends to increase in response with new perceived needs or accesses until another equilibrium is achieved at an even higher level of volume. So I think this is something we would need to consider and study using contemporary methods, if we were going to study it at all, then apply it to our neighborhood really thoughtfully. You know, I don't think there is one quick fix to any of these solutions, but I think that there are precedents out there and things that we could use to draw on this, should it come to that. I think the other big issue that we haven't addressed is that we're not a neighborhood by ourselves. We have neighbors in two lights. We have neighbors in Shore Acres. Things that happen in our neighborhood affect those neighborhoods. Issues about where, if and when, 
or where a road should, should open up very much affect these other neighborhoods. You know, where are we going to be displacing volume if we think that's what's going to be happening? Onto Two Lights Road, is that fair? Do we need to study it? Do they need to be absorbing the volume of traffic from our neighborhood? These are questions we all have to think about. And we all have to pose as a community broader than Broad Cove. So those are issues right off the bat, I think, that need to be brought to bear. And I don't know that people have necessarily thought about, I certainly hadn't thought about till I really sat down and looked at the issues. Um, Cape Elizabeth looked specifically at Jordan Farm Road before, as recently as 1996. There were petitions to the DEP asking that this road be paved as an emergency access. And as recently as 1996, the DEP has ruled, and this is subsequent to other rulings earlier to that, that it should remain a gravel road, an emergency access gravel road, because there is an RP2 wetland and ponds contiguous to the road. There is a pond that's 10 feet, 10 to 15 feet from the road at its current narrowest width. So the DEP has, has looked at this. One of the things that um, we would need to do if you were to go back to the DEP is to convince them that there's no other way out of the neighborhood. You have to be able to demonstrate alternative analyses that show there's no other way out. As a town, we have to decide, and as a neighborhood, you know, what are we going to do? Are we going to present one road, target one area, and ask them to rule on it, and have them come back to us and say, no, you know, there are other ways out, as we've shown in past studies. You know, this is an issue you have to go back to your town planning board to discuss. I don't know how much time, energy, and money it takes to do those kinds of study. I don't know, but I would expect it's fairly expensive. So we have to really think about that before we open up these issues about targeting specifically one road. And then we have to think in terms of the neighborhood, what's fair? Do we look at one road that's there as an emergency access? Do we look at all possible egresses out? Personally, I think, you know, we need to address speed and volume issues internally without adding roads, I would prefer not to see any new road opened up in Broad Cove. Um, but we have to be fair about this and say, is there an access out of Ledgewood that goes into Shore Acres that would allow people in Ledgewood, 43, 45 homes in Ledgewood, to enter out that way? Does it provide a secondary route out then for Shore Acres? Or is it harmful to both neighborhoods? Is the impact negative? Are there up wetlands up there or not? They don't appear on the map, but maybe there are, other, there are those or other safety concerns. <coughs> which we, I think we would need to really consider comprehensively and seriously. So while this petition has targeted a specific road to open, should the town council decide that it's worth pursuing further, I think that it would require extensive DEP analyses and not just one part of the neighborhood, but the whole part of the neighborhood. What are we doing to our wetlands? We're a coastal community. There's a commitment in the town to preserve them. How can we balance that need and that demonstrated benefit that makes us different from New Jersey, makes us different from Massachusetts with our internal needs. How do we assess true traffic flow patterns using state-of-the-art technology, looking at an entire neighborhood and not one portion of it? This is anecdotal information. It's going to require extensive, expensive study to look at that traffic flow speed and safety. And on one final point, the town, um, the emergency access road is up to code. It is a full access road. Mr. McGovern has assured me that it is a full access road. So I think we need to address that issue separately if there are problems in the fire and police department in that regard. Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs> Mrs. Wasserman, what is your address? Thank you very much. And I, I do want to again make clear that this is not a public hearing. This is really the, the simplest part of the step, usually, for the council to uh, hear this. But we appreciate hearing the two points of view. And um, this is indeed a thorny issue. And they have certainly come before this council and other councils before us. And we will do our best to deal with them in the most fair way we can, since our job is to represent all people in the community and all neighborhoods. Our effort is to be fair and to hear everybody equally. So now, yes, Councillor Watson. Madam Chair, I need to um, have a discussion with the council members about where, um, where I live and the fact that I live on Seven Winding Way, which is in Broad Cove, which does um, abut uh, a portion of what used to be the Farm Pond Road, which is now Jordan Farm. 
So I reside there. I don't necessarily see it as a conflict any more than I would see the fact that Henry Berry lives on two lights or the fact that uh, uh, our chairman lives in Shore Acres or that some of us are on the rescue or have connections to the police department necessarily as a, um, an issue. But I do need to make the public as well as the council aware that I do live there and that um, I am impacted by the issues and problems in Broadcove. So um, I would uh, appeal to you for your best judgment as to what the council's desire would be as to um, my voting on this issue. Madam Chairman. Could Councilor I Barry. Raise a point of order. Uh, section 24 of the uh, rules that were adopted for procedural uh, operation of the council for this year it says that every member present when a question is put shall, which is mandatory language, shall give his vote unless the council for special reasons shall excuse him. Application to be so excused must be made before the council is divided or before the calling of the yes or no votes and decided without debate. Mm -hmm. um, I think the mandatory language uh, would insist that uh, Councilor Watson should vote. Councilor Barry, one of the things that certainly has to do with, with recusing or not recusing oneself is if there's financial impact. And surely with my son in the police department, I took no votes or anything regarding police contracts because it, it, it impacted a financial level, which I thought was a conflict. And I guess Councilor Watson needs to think about if that road were to go there, would this impact her, the value of her home, is there a financial edge to this somewhere because that would, I mean, this is an opinion that the, that the rest of the council uh, needs to talk about since Councillor Watson does, she's asking us to make that decision. So I think we need to hear from other councillors and we have, are not yet divided and we have not yet had a yes or no vote. Right. And this is the time, I think, for us to decide before we get into debate. So is there any other councillors that um, feel, I think it would be helpful if, if I mean, I, I don't know exactly where the road, if the road were to, to, if this were to happen, whereabouts it is in relation to your, is it right, it's right next to that road, isn't it? Your driveway? Right, not my driveway. Right now, my driveway extends, really, it's the extension of Winding Way. Because oh, oh, yeah. where Winding Way ends is where my driveway begins, and Jordan Farm, a, pa the, a paved portion of Jordan, right. Jordan Farm, goes by my house. I know. My right. property line would end where the pavement ends and then the graveled road continues is beyond my property. Okay. So it's currently paved to the far side, if you will, on the south side of the property and then the gravel road picks up. But to say that it does Jordan Farm Road, paved and unpaved, portions of it go by my house. And it is at that intersection of Winding Way, Jordan Farm, and to the left would be Running Tide is where my home is. Okay. Is that clear to the rest of the council? They, they know where the location of the road and, and Councilor Watson's driveway is? Okay. All right. I'm ready to hear from other councilors. Councilor Fritz? I don't know. Um, my thinking on this is that if, if this is reconsidered, it, it might likely go back to the planning board and the DEP for those reconsideration so that it wouldn't be as much of a town council um, decision. Um, and also, I, when I served on the planning board, I remember there was a developer development that was taking place next to my property. It was the Cran development. And I did not need to refuse myself except, I mean, um, because, I mean, it was planning a large area. I mean, we all live within this town, and um, it, it didn't seem necessary to the legal, uh, you know, advice that I got at that time that we needed to do that. So my inclination is to not make Councilor Watson step down on the issue. It, it is going to be our decision, however. I mean, those other people may be making, it, it is our decision to decide whether to send it or not send it to the DEP or anything. Yes? When we had the major issues regarding Two Lights Road, um, Henry didn't recuse himself, 
and of course that's on his road too. So mm -hmm. um, I think there might be some precedent here for not recusing himself. Okay. Anybody else? Councilor Swift Kayata. I have the highest regard for Ruth. Oh, thank you. And I think she would do a good job of voting fairly, but I think the appearance is something that might impair people's opinion of your credibility. If, if it were me, I think I would recuse myself. And I, I feel odd saying this because you're probably the person who has the best personal knowledge of this issue, so it does seem sort of weird, but um, I intend this in no personal way, but oh, because I, I think you do a good job, but uh, I think it, uh, the appearance might be inappropriate. Councilor Roberts? I, I, I feel the same way as, as Councilor Swift-Gayetta, and I think the Council on a number of occasions has been remiss in different members perhaps not accusing themselves when they should have. But, and this one is going to be a very heated debate, I have a feeling. And again, to keep it biased as much as possible, I believe I would ask Ruth also to step uh, aside on this particular issue. And could I ask a question? Uh -huh. um, would this be, I was talking about recusing herself from voting. However, I have no concern with Councillor Watson asking questions during the whole process. I, I don't mean that, and I don't know how this goes with Robert's rules of order or anything. I don't know if she has to, you know, sit there with a bag over her head if she recruits <laughs> it. She can herself. participate in the discussion. <laughs> but, but, you know, we just wait for her to twitch at appropriate moments. <laughs> but, um, just kick me if I fall asleep. All yeah. right? <laughs> I don't think we'll be falling I, asleep. I, would, I have absolutely no concern about her expressing her opinion. It's more the voting aspect of it that I'm, I'm concerned about. Well, I too uh, am concerned about the uh, perception or the appearance of a conflict. I think the process that we're in right now is to, um, if we devote to set this to public hearing, our job is to listen to people and not have any opinions ahead of time. That's the whole point of it. The whole point of it is that you get to persuade us one way or the other until our opinions are formed based on things that are said. So if we're up here sitting here and we already have our opinions already formed and we've never had a public hearing, that's hardly fair. So I, I, um, I, I tend to think and agree with Councillor swift Kayetta that it is the perception of conflict that is of concern. I also have no concern for Councillor Watson participating in the, con in the conversation, the debate, or the discussion at all. But to vote on um, whether or not this goes forward, I would consider that to be um, a conflict. Just if I might, Madam Chairman, mm -hmm. under the state's conflict of interest uh, provisions, if a councillor rec recuses from voting, the councillor must also recuse from all discussion mm -hmm. at the podium as a member of the council. It's not a choice to select one or the other. Can she participate as in the public, in the um, in a workshop forum or any other kind of forum? Do you think? No. The, the, the state law provides that if the decision is made with any counselor on any issue, uh, that the, recuse, the recusal must involve both discussion during the council meetings as well as the votes, which does not preclude any individual from speaking as an individual citizen from the podium on the issue but not as, as a counselor with, with the rights and privileges of a counselor, so she whatever cannot, those are. <laughs> so just, just to clarify, so Councillor Watson could speak from the podium out there as a citizen, as an interested citizen, but just not in her role as counselor up here? Yeah. If the decision on any counselor on any issue is to recuse, it is both discussion and voting as a counselor as at a counselor. the podium, okay. no, but not at that point. I'm sorry, but not at the podium? She could still speak at the podium oh. as a citizen, but not as a member of the council with speaking, you know, when councilors speak, that, that type of thing. And I could only do that at a public hearing, right? You would have, or any councilor similarly situated, trying to depersonalize this, would have all of the rights that a, that a citizen has to fully participate in a public dialogue, but would not have the rights of a, of, as a council member of like when once public discussion is closed, it's simply the remaining councillors on an issue who participate in the discussion. In the okay, we need to vote on this. We can move forward here. 
Um, we need a motion. Whichever way the motion is going to go, we need a motion on Councillor Watson's request. A statement. We need a motion to either accept or to not can't, accept. I just can't remember which way you worded it. So I don't know what it is. Councillor Watson um, stated I, that I, she I, did not I, believe that she I should be recused. I move that the um, council ask Councillor Watson to recuse herself on this issue. I will second that. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Uh, Councillor uh, Barry. I don't hear a, a financial interest involved here. It would just be talking about the value of her real estate. I think that's pretty nebulous. The, the, I don't have the statute in front of me, but the state statute has two sides to it. One is pecuniary interest, and the other is bias. That, you know, if because of some special circumstance on any issue a counselor has undue bias, then they also uh, are required to abstain. So I would think that if the counselor want, you know, if the, if the council was going to take a vote to exclude a councillor from a vote, you'd want to specifically state the reason why as part of that. Right. we we'll leave it to those the person making the motion. Yeah, I hate making this motion because I, it's purely the appearance thing. Um, so could I amend my motion that because, uh, the council asks Councillor Watson to recuse herself because of a potential appearance of a conflict. Does that do it? Do I have to be more specific? I think if a counselor were to challenge this vote, that it ought to be based on the standards that are within the state law, which are either pecuniary interests or bias. <laughs> this is <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, one could argue either way that it could benefit me, quite frankly. Yes, um, because of the uh, pecuniary, the financial interest of the potential impact it might have on her home's value. You can, you can clear that up. Come on, guys, you can just vote me down. Just don't, don't make me struggle with this. <laughs> if you don't agree, just kill it right now. It, the financial interest that we're talking about is if you live in a home that does not have a road in front of it, and sometime later you do have a road in front of it, that there, prob there may well be uh, a, f a financial impact on the value of that home. Well, it's not a complete road. We're not going to get into a debate. This is the inappropriate time for us to get into a debate. I just heard the question asked, and I shouldn't have actually responded. So we are going to, uh, the council is going to vote. Is there any more discussion on this issue? All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? I can't vote. No. Right, four to two. <laughs> in favor. Thank you very much. Now the next, next uh, Part of this is to, uh, to have discussion of whether to set this for public hearing. Don't we, do we have to have a motion before we have Yeah, the we're going to have the motion. We're, 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 I'm waiting for the motion. I move we uh, set a public hearing on this. Do we have some date in mind? Yeah, that's why the other October 2nd. That's why that item, ah, other item is okay. first. Mm. For October 2nd. It's been moved and seconded. Is it seconded? I will second it. It's been moved and seconded that we set item number 34 for public hearing on October 2nd at 7.30. Is there any more discussion? Councilor Barry. Uh, this seems to me a, a little premature. It, it comes uh, all of a sudden here. We've heard uh, comment about the DEP and uh, uh, an overall neighborhood uh, survey and so forth. Uh, October 2nd, it seems a little sudden to me to address all these issues, and uh, I think we should have more time. We, we probably would not be able to address the issues of the planning board, the zoning board, and the DEP. Right. We would simply be able to have the, op the citizens to have an opportunity to express their opinion at the public hearing. Oh, no, no I don't object to that. Yeah. The more the merrier, but uh, as, as far as any uh, action, uh, I think we need more information. You don't have to take any action after that public hearing at that time. You could, uh, 
Yes. Yeah, I, I would agree with Henry. You know, there's a lot of issues involved here that maybe this should be workshopped um, so that we can sit down and have some conversations about all these. You know, I'm not opposed to listen to the public's opinion, obviously, but right. um, I think we need to get the background information, particularly from our staff, on what the what the role of this road was when it was put in, et cetera, et cetera. The DEP's position on this, all those things. You know, I think we need that staff work done. Councillor Roberts. M Madam Chairwoman, I think I'd like to also have it maybe a, a month later. Uh, I had a number of questions that I was asked staff to do, and it's a real short period of time to do it, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the sense is that, that you want to change the date. If we're to do it, we're going to extend this Just out? Just to postpone it for one month beyond uh, right. to the November meeting. Well, not the November. Yeah, okay, the November meeting. The, the motioner. Yes. Um, Councillor Swift Gayata. I wanted to ask the manager's opinion. Um, I spoke with him earlier today, and I, too, like the other counselors, would like more information. Um, and I went over some of my questions. I'll put these in more detailed form tomorrow. But I would want more information on traffic counts on Two Lights Road, on Broad Cove Road, on traffic accident history, um, on public safety issues. I'd like to look at a map. I've been out there and driven around extensively, but I had to use the odometer on my car, and I'm not sure it's the most precise thing. Um, I'd like a count on the number of homes affected in the, in the different neighborhoods affected. There's a bunch of different information, as well as the history, as well as some DEP information. Um, so that's a lot of information. I don't know if it could be available by October 2nd, and that's my question of the manager. Do you, do you think that's too much to get together for then? Be, if it is, I'd like to have all the information. Yeah, if yeah. it isn't, I, I think it's the right of the citizens to petition the government. It's a constitutional right in the U.S. Constitution, and I, I know people would want to move forward on this, but I also know that people want us to give a full and measured hearing and, and response. So if it's too quick to get all that information, perhaps we should defer it a little. But if it's not too quick, then we should know that. Yeah. Okay. I'll answer that. Because you moved the meeting to October 2nd, it really is very limiting in, in terms of, of trying to get the information and to have it available to both the council and the public to see mm -hmm. well in advance of the meeting. My hope is that you know, if you moved it to November, that perhaps we could have all the information ready by about October 20th, and that way everyone could see it, no matter what their view is on the issue. We could post it on the web. Uh, you know, the, any report that, that might come of the questions or any of the other information. So, so what November would probably November, be probably November 13th would, November be, 13th. would be that, uh, that date. Then give time to get some of the information that you want and still be able to hear the, the comments from the public. Right, then so I'd like to amend my motion to make it the November 13th, to make the public hearing the, at the November 13th meeting. Okay. I had seconded and I'm prepared to do the same for this one. It's been moved and seconded that we set item number 34 to the regular council meeting of November 13th at uh, 7.30 for a public hearing. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. The motion carries. Madam Chairman. Yes. Could we um, have, I mean, I understand there are some people at the DEP who, st who remember the issues that were involved in this, and I'm just wondering if they could be invited, and we do get minutes of all the planning board meetings and all that kind of background. Um, because, I mean, despite some of the background that was known about this in memos that were written, both of those boards made decisions that were in opposition to, to this. So I, there must be some solid reasoning there, and, and I want to have all that Just to consider. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if there's a spokesman from the DEP. If I might, Madam Chairman, usually the DEP won't send someone to a hearing, but I know quite a few of the citizens in the audience have already spoken to the DEP. To my knowledge, no one from the town itself has on this issue. Uh, but, you know, I know there are a number of issues in the DEP file that specifically outline the advantages of a, of a gravel road uh, for the environmental issues uh, versus, you know, I think there was another uh, engineering report submitted by whoever the town's engineer was then that said why the paved road 
would be better. And all of those are in the DEP file. We can get copies of those, and that I think will help you to see the history a little bit better. And what we'll also do is create a, you know, an ongoing file here here in the office for as we get the information. You know, it's uh, they're all public records and. Anyone who wants to look at it can, or anyone that wants for the DEP. I would like to say, up to this point, no, again, reiterate, no one from the town has spoken to the DEP because uh, uh, it is, there was no request from the town council to do so. Any further discussion? All those in uh, favor, yeah, Councillor Barry. I'm just going to mention that I have heard uh, some comments about uh, traffic speeding problems here which uh, does not depend on a road, I think. I think those should be addressed, and we should uh, ask the manager to contact the police chief and perhaps uh, uh, survey some of the uh, speeding incidents that are concerning these people, because uh, also on, uh, on Two Lights Road, there's a daycare center right there with a lot of children, and, and Broad Cove also, waiting for the bus in the morning and uh, people going to work. Uh, we don't want anybody at risk over there, so perhaps this uh, sense of uh, what I think is coming from the committee should, uh, from the people, should be uh, passed along to the police chief for uh, surveillance in that matter before we leave this issue. It's been moved and seconded that item number 34 be set for public hearing on November 13th at 7.30. Having heard discussion, is there any, is there any more discussion? We voted. We voted already. Did, vote? Did we set it? Did we vote? It's all done. Can't believe it. We had the discussion afterward. That's what confused me. <laughs> Sir. I think the, the members of the community that are here can see that this is, this is a difficult issue for the members of the council. We want to do what's right. We want to serve everybody's needs. We want everybody to feel that we're, that we're listening to them fairly and that they have a fair opportunity to present their point of view. And that is the basic premise that the council is working on. So I hope that we'll get this information that we need because it appears that probably the citizens already have that information from the DEP that we do not have in our files right now. But we will have it and we will be prepared to listen uh, and to weigh everybody's opinion. And I thank you very much for coming, and you're certainly welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. However. <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't believe it. Drive carefully on the way home. <laughs> Traffic is in the front of huh? <laughs> Why? What do we got for him? <laughs> yeah? I don't understand it, guys. I completed my first term in 1968. Oh. Uh, you have a whole dining room full. <laughs> I actually, this will be my third. I have changed my chairs around the table. Not for the council, but for other chairs. No, I never had a pound chair. I got a couple of silver bowls. What do you think, kids? We are on the air, and I know this is difficult, but we would like to clear the room, please. Could we clear the room since we're on the air, please? Thank you. Or stay. Uh, item number 35, action on proposed collective bargaining agreement with local 340 of the Teamsters representing certain public works employees. That packet which has been worked over and that agreement is in your packet. I don't have anything additional to no, add. The same. town council has same. had several meetings over this, mostly an executive session under the uh, state provisions involving negotiating with unions and there's been uh, only one sentence change in this since the council last saw it, and that's the, the issue of pro rata health insurance, which the council had agreed to, agreed to during the budget mm -hmm. process, but was not in the, the last draft of this document. So. But it's in here now? It's in here now. That was for the part-timers? For the part, the okay. folks oh, yeah. working. In this bargaining unit, it affects the part-time person at the refuse to aware. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move approval of the contract. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the bargaining agreement between Local 340, the Teamsters, representing the Public Works. Is there any more discussion? 
All those in favor? Opposed, none. Motion carries. Item number 36, action on proposed amendments to the personnel code. That's it. You're out of here, Bob. That item was also in your packet, which I think you probably had an opportunity to look at. Is there any changes that you want us to? Yeah, just one brief. The personnel code uh, involves non-union employees. This is to bring it into conformance with current practices, with federal law, with provisions in uh, the collective bargaining agreements that are applicable. And I would call your attention to the final page, Appendix A. We're adding two salaried positions, facilities manager and pool director. It's on the back page. I did very back page. And the public work supervisor, I discovered this morning, isn't. It's been on this list for several years, but it hasn't been for many years. But it hasn't been a salaried position for many years, so that should be crossed out. But with that change, I'd recommend approval. The director of public works should be crossed out. Yeah. Public works supervisor. Oh, no, super oh yeah. <laughs> It'd be very expensive to be yeah, over right. that. So. Just a, a typo that I was, uh -huh. I think, um, on page yep. 16, where it There's says 20 number. hours yes, over a week. I assume that's per week. Per week. Thank you. There's a typo on the Cub Scout and the Boy Scout. Mm. I'll do a note. Okay. Where's the typo on this? Did you, did you it's on page 16. The, the largest underlined paragraph, the word over should be per. It's in line three. Right here. Right there, over should be per. Okay. Any other errors or omissions? Changes? Let's move the question. I move we accept the uh, proposed amendments to the personnel code. Second? Second. It's been moved and seconded that we accept the proposed amendments to the personnel code. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. That carries. Item number 37, action on a proposed employee internet and computer use policy. A document that I found very interesting reading, since I had not actually seen one and wondered what groups did about this. Madam Chairman, this is, as I mentioned, is so modeled after the school policy right. that we even forgot to take the word school well, out of life. So <laughs> the two references on the, the, the first page to school would, would be town yeah. and the and supervision of the town. The word unit in that fourth paragraph would be eliminated. But we, w we do plan, we do recommend that you keep the sentence in here of, uh, in the final section, that we would not allow for municipal employees any inappropriate communications with students or minors. Will That's would re re yeah. is proposed to remain. But it, there are two, two, two sections in that, uh, on that first page, employee computer and internet use, sort of the overview that uh, in the second line of the second paragraph, incidental personal use of town computers is permitted. And then uh, in the fourth paragraph, all town computers remain under control, custody, and supervision of the town. Very nice. And then also, wouldn't the reference be in the last line of that paragraph, too? Employees have no expectation of privacy yes. in their use of town computers. That find in Microsoft Work really works well today, I figured. <laughs> I spent all day, an hour, trying to find things in the computer. Couldn't do it today. All right. Are we ready for this question? I presume this has been, it has been in effect how long the schools and this has worked for them? Yeah, they've had several policies. I think this current one has been in place about six months, so it really, with school being out of session, hasn't had, a, had an opportunity to be tested. I'll move. Yes, let me get to you. I move approval of the uh, computer and internet use policy as put forth. A second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Item number 38. Kids keeping up with us down there? We're moving right along here. <laughs> Item number 38, action to accept proposed open space deeds at the Hemlock Hill subdivision. This is the third time this has been before yeah. the town council. Uh, it was, came initial time Joel Fitzpatrick came to the meeting. And the Hemlock Hill is over sort of in back of Oakhurst Road, back of the row residence. You know where that is? In Between Dunlop. Mitchell Road and... And, and uh, Joel Fitzpatrick came back a second time. It was slightly amended, so... 
we get slightly, just a slight bit more land than we otherwise got. But these are in order for now for final acceptance now that the road has been paved. He's ready to turn them over. Councillor Roberts. I would move the town accept the uh, proposed open space at Hemlock Second. Hill subdivision. Councillor Barry, would you see that the motioner gets a chance to complete their sentence first? <laughs> You're so fast that I can't even get my head turning that fast. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Are we ready? Any more discussion? Oops, discussion. The, the town becomes the owner of the property. That's correct. And the public gets the easement across the land, right? I just wanted to, yeah. there was There was one point in here where it said that there, there could be supervision by the grantor on whether the, the property was being maintained as it was intended. So I, I wasn't sure whether they were retaining some authority within the subdivision. All of these conservation easements have a standard language that provides they would become null and void if we tried to use it for a purpose other than the intended purposes. That's, that's standard language. Particularly in those instances where you don't have a third party enforcer such as the land trust or some other group involved. But it's conveyed subject to these principles that will will keep it principles, yes, that will keep it as open space. More questions about this item? Was it moved and seconded? You have it all written ahead of time. I just want to know if the names are in there. Let's move the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Are there any, is there any discussion of items not on the agenda from the citizens? Highly unlikely, I would say. Highly unlikely? Just, while the students are here for the council, I had a discussion with them when I met them a week or two ago. And one of the initial uh, provisions within having student representatives was the hope they would occasionally meet with staff members. And what I'd like to do, as soon as their schedules become a little bit more known, uh, is to try to set up approximately monthly meetings at which I would have a department head each month come in, talk about their department, about the different activities, and have it in part driven by the students as to which ones they'd like to meet with, and also to invite a counselor to one counselor to each of those sessions as well, so they get the perspective of, from a council member too, of you know what are the issues as they, as they interact with the department. So, if any councilors are interested in doing that, uh, uh, let me know uh, for your lead tonight. And as we set up those meetings, uh, we'll, I'll invite a different one in for them because I, I think they could be very productive in helping to share the student viewpoint beyond just those issues that appear from month to month on the council agenda. Thanks, terrific idea. I don't know if the representatives want to appear at the town hall more often, but <laughs> oh, it's a great idea. It's, it's do you? Interesting. Yeah. That's good. I'm, I'm curious whether there's any um, effort to take what you learn here by participating back to your classmates. Um, we haven't yet had a student Yeah, it is here, early. So we have one scheduled actually um, for the end of month, this month. So we hopefully we'll have a chance to visit them. But does anybody ever, oh, you don't know yet. I wonder if anybody ever asked, like, Teacher, what are, it's not social studies anymore. What do they call it? Is there something like social studies in high school now? Government. They have government. The senior government, government, government yeah. requirement. Yeah. I'm too old. My kids had social studies. <laughs> All right. Hearing no items from uh, citizens, hearing no discussion from item, from citizens about items not on the agenda, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Councilor Barry. Second. It's been moved and seconded. More discussion. All those in favor? Motion carries. This meeting is adjourned.